Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we talk through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today we have a practice question related to the non-systems. As per our usual, we are going through the FSBPT's content outline. This takes you through all of the content that will be presented on test day. And I want you to be as prepared as possible through all of the systems on the exam. Now of note, the non-systems is really just a small part of the content. Uh, today we're talking about equipment devices and technologies, so somewhere between five and six questions related to this. So this is part of the non-systems. The non-systems has about 30 questions total. It is a, a collection of a number of non-system items. And so I guess if I were to have a nickel for every time someone asked me a question, it would have been about the non-systems. Either non-systems or interventions seems to be one of the things or among the things that students struggle with the most. And so today is a good example of things that you probably know, but you haven't maybe necessarily been tested on it. And so therefore what happens is that you get fr you freeze up on test day because something that you feel like you should know and suddenly you're second guessing yourself. And hopefully this is an example of how to not second guess yourself and come to the correct answer. But before we get to the practice question, just a reminder that we are running our fresh crash course for both PTs and PTAs. Be sure to check that out. We run that before every test date. I think you'll really enjoy it. Plus, we do have group discounts available if you want to get your class together. Any group of five or more, you get a pretty sweet discount. So you can reach out to us at ptfinalexam.com slash contact to get a sweet discount on your crash course. And again, the crash course, that's one of my favorite courses. I mean, they're all my favorites, I suppose. But the crash course is so great because it gives us the opportunity to go through cardio, musculo, and neuro one more time right before test day. Kind of like cramming, but way, way, way better. Simply because we have more time, we can go through things in a more concrete way, but it is still very brief and fast. It's like trying to squeeze you know, three, three years of PT school into about three weeks. So it is a, a very quick review, but it is extremely beneficial. I've had so many students reach out and say that that was just the ticket, just what they needed to get right over the top. And so if you're considering a course right before test day, the crash course is a great fit for you. Plus of note, this is, this comes included as a complimentary part of our, both our premium and our VIP classes. And so if you want to get your best bang for your buck, you'll sign up for those other classes so you can have access to the crash course at no additional charge. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started with our practice question today. So this question, again, is related to the non-systems. As per usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. Also a reminder, if you are a visual learner, be sure to check us out over on YouTube where you can see the question and not just hear the question. So I think you'll, you'll like that too. Here we go. A patient is using axillary crutches for ambulation to maintain partial weight bearing on the affected lower extremity. When attempting to ascend stairs, which of the following actions will be performed first? So a patient is using axillary crutches for ambulation to maintain partial weight bearing on the affected lower extremity. When attempting to ascend stairs, which of the following actions will be performed first? One, bear weight with both hands and partially on the, ex the affected extremity. Two, bring the affected extremity and crutches up to the first step together. Three, lift the unaffected extremity up to the first step. And four, shift all weight to the unaffected extremity and lift the crutches. So we've got one, bear weight with both hands and partially on the unaffected, or sorry, <clears throat> bear weight on both hands and partially on the affected extremity. Two, bring the affected extremity and crutches up to the first step together. Three, lift the unaffected extremity up to the first step. And four, shift all weight to the unaffected extremity and lift the crutches. So again, this is one of those items that you probably, you know, just talking through it, you're probably like, okay, yeah, clearly I know how to help someone bear weight and move through, uh, move up the stairs. But the correct answer here is to bear weight with both hands and partially on the affected extremity first. So you get to the base of the stairs, you have them bear weight with their, with their hands on the crutches and their their partial weight bearing limb while you lift the unaffected leg to the first step. And then you bring the rest of you, bring your unaffected, I'm sorry, bring your affected and your crutches up. This is the, the mantra up with the good down with the bad. So you come to the base of the stairs and you lift the good one. But the only way to lift the good one is you have to bear weight first through your hands and affected lower extremity, partial weight bearing clearly. So you, you partially bear weight 
and then you lift up the the unaffected foot or your good foot i guess we're not supposed to call it good or bad feet right you lift your good foot up to the step once you've lifted the good foot up the step then you follow by bringing both the uh, both the crutches and your affected lower extremity up to the first step to, to bring it up to catch up i suppose and then to descend stairs to go down you go down with the bad so up with the good down with the bad down to go down with the bad you move the crutches down first then the affected lower extremity and then you follow that with your good leg so you go down with the bad up with the good and you'll treat treat and teach this to many many patients as you help them in their ambulation and stair training and of note this is critical to note that the anytime there is a railing present you should use the rail so this was not described in this question of whether or not there was a rail present but in any in any case whenever there is a rail present you will use the rail where, wherever it is i mean whether it's on the right side left side it doesn't really matter you will hold on to the firm rail with one hand and move both crutches to the other hand that way you could use the rail and the crutches uh, all the crutches are almost like a cane at that point but the reason you do that is because the rail is the most safe it's clearly the most sturdy and stable thing that a patient can hold on to so you'll try to encourage that as much as possible so again up with the good down with the bad this is a way they could ask questions about that just to make sure you understand not only the appropriate use of crutches but also how to ascend stairs so this is a good example of equipment devices and technology so all right, well, with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. As always, much appreciated. Appreciate you spending time with me. Uh, be sure to head over and leave us a five-star review over on Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you listen to this podcast. Check us out over on YouTube if you enjoy seeing the question, not just hearing it. And then check out all of our other episodes. You can find all of our cheat sheets and everything at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. And I will catch you all in the next episode. Thanks, everyone. Will Crane fist pumps all around. Catch you later.